Hello there, everyone. This is Twenty to Tiger Dude here on Streamyard. On, on Streamyard, yes. Last anticipated video we did it from Skype, but now we are switching <laughs> once again to Streamyard. So yes, this will be the first video on Streamyard. But we are doing the top five anticipated winter spring 2020 films. And the fact that I'm even saying 2020 is insane. As we're recording this video, of course, we're getting ready to hit a new decade. I want to get to everyone one by one. Starting off with, who do I want to start off with? You know what? I'll start off with Adam. So, uh, yeah. Bro, I am always last, so this is great. Um, <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts, I guess. Hi, guys. My name is Kevin Falk. How are you? Wow. That's, uh, that's all I have to say. Of course, I'm the best character. <laughs> Truly <Absolutely Yeah>. inspiring. <laughs> Next up here we have is Jackson. It's literally, it's just Tony and I for this. Like, fucking join. What the fuck? You actually have a list aside from, like, most of the groups. Like, go. That was a really good mes message that really persuaded me to actually join. Thanks, Kevin. You sure. POS. That stands for piece of shit. Wow, I really didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, you guys? FilmFandle599 here again. I'm here for another anticipated video. Oh, boy. This looks like the driest um, winter um, spring season I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, literally, this was the toughest list I've ever had to make, but I don't mean that in a good way at all. Um, yeah, um, but I'm excited to talk about... Well, I'm really excited to talk about the top three, but... We'll, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it, folks. And surprisingly, the last person in this video... Oh, and fuck uh, Kevin Polk. Hang Kevin. on, hang on. Get out of here. What the fuck? Are you actually in this? This bitch is at my house. The guy, I gotta say something first. Hi. I'm not going to be joining this one what because, the like film fans said, this this these few months. No, no, they, I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm out. I'm out. They don't out. really, they don't really have anything that I'm like like that like extremely excited for, except for like two films. There's some other ones I'm really excited for, but like like you know, there's only like a few I'm really want to talk about. But I wanted to say quickly, this bitch is in my house. He's doing stuff in my house, like sleeping, eating, and shitting, and. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, can you fuck a sidebar? Because that way. So I just wanted to say hi. Um, happy new year, happy new decade, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I love all of you, except for you. Uh, fuck you. Ow! Get the fuck out of here. Fight, 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 fight. Somebody hit an RKO. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love all of you, especially you, film fan. You're a beautiful man. Goodbye. All right. Hey guys, it's me, Kevin, again. Now that that bitch is gone, let's get to the real deal here. All right, so, uh, hey guys, of course, it's uh, Kevin again, and I uh, can't believe we're already in a new decade. It's uh, pretty crazy how fast this uh, decade has flown by, but uh, yeah, uh, as most people alluded to, yeah, this uh, this winter season, this winter spring season looks pretty stacked, man, I gotta say. A lot of, a lot of great stuff coming out. Uh, very... <laughs> I'm very excited to talk about all of these movies. So let's just get right into it. Yay! Oh my god. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest. This season looks pretty dead, honestly. Um, so, but yeah, you know what? We're all going to try, right? We're, we're all going to try regardless. But of course, before we get to our list, we will get to our honorable mentions if anyone does have any so my honorable mentions i have uh none <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and go to adam for honorable mentions all right i have eight honorable mentions here we go um we got spider-man 4 <laughs> oh, yeah, very the blue batch. oh man the room okay a bug's life mm. red dead redemption 2 Oh wow! Okay, they didn't even do the first one. They're gonna write the second one. Let's go. An apple kills Kevin. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda Three. I mean, I stole my stole the apple, so that works. And like a boss. <laughs> no! 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 
fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackson, do you have any honorable mentions? All right, I don't. I don't think I'll be able to top Adam, but here are my seven honorable mentions. Uh, we have the Way Back, Emma, Saint Maud, The Invisible Man, Promising Young Woman. Birds of Prey, and The Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, and A Quiet Place to Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Film fan. Oh, man. All right, I believe I have, uh, yes, I have four honorable mentions, so oh, uh, here we go. We have Bad Boys for Life, The Call of the Wild, uh, The Way Back, and Bloodshot. We come to the guy that always has a million honorable mentions. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a lot. So, uh, so Kevin, you know, go for it. Take it away. Well, uh, you'll be very happy to know, Tony, that for once I actually don't have all that many. So, uh, we'll just get to it. Hallelujah! Shut the fuck up! I know. I know. I know. I did not ask for any comments in the peanut gallery, but uh, all right. So oh, peanut gallery, what is he talking about? I'm not sure, Bill. In no particular order, about. we have, well, even though it's in order of release, but whatever, we have The Gentleman, Gretel and Hansel, Birds of Prey, The Lodge, Call of the Wild, Downhill, Buffaloed, The Invisible Man, The Education of Frederick Fitzel, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, Inside the Rain, Antlers, and then my 10 through 6, number 10 is Promising Young Women, number 9 is The Climb, number 8 is Emma, number 7 is Antebellum, and number 6 is Color Out of Space. Okay, it's Promising Young Women, not women. Whatever! There's women in the movie, so it works. You're a real idiot. (laughs) Let's go ahead and get to our top 5. Yeah. My number four and five are movies I am really interested in. And to start off with that list, my number five is The Way Back. This one is directed by Gavin O'Connor, who has brought us movies such as The Accountant and Warrior, both really great movies in my opinion. And you also have Ben Affleck here. I just think that the movie looks very, very interesting. It's supposed to be about a former basketball coach. Yeah. And he's struggling with alcoholism, and it just looks like it's going to be just such a very um, tragic story, and Ben Affleck looks <laughs> like he's going to really deliver with that. Gavin O'Connor's direction looks really beautiful here. And the trailer definitely drew me in. While it's a movie I'm not like on the excitement level for, I am definitely really, really looking forward to, and that's why The Way Back is my number five. Not to get mixed up with The Way Way Back. The way I know you love that one, starring Ben Affleck. And yeah, I mean, you're right up there, man. Um, my number five is uh, Birds of Prey. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not really excited for this movie at all. Um, mm. I'm not even looking forward to it like at all, but uh, yeah. it might be a great movie. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal was really great as Harley Quinn, yeah, in Suicide Squad, so I'm excited to see what he does in this one. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Teddy Crawford. My number five is... Hold on one second. Jesus Christ. All right, I got it. <clears throat> it's called Onward. Holy Onward God. is my number five. It's a D- Disney Pixar movie that is coming out, not sold. That is a summer one, but Onward is the one coming out. March, March. Um, I'm very excited for this, not just because of the voice talent involved, although obviously that is something to be highly attracted to. We have Chris Pratt, Tom Holland, obviously from the MCU, and Julia Louise Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer, all these great people. And you know, it just seems like a really great idea. You got the the, these fan this fantasy world that's combined with uh, the modern world, which I think is a really clever idea. And I think they have a story premise here that could lead to some really emotionally touching, good stuff that Pixar is usually famous for doing. I'm really excited because this is also uh, uh, the director of Monsters University, which although not my favorite Pixar movie, I think it's one that's really underrated. I I actually like that. I I think more than most people, I thought Dan Scanlon did a really good job. So I'm I'm glad he got another Pixar movie to make. And I'm happy that it's with such a unique uh, premise and such a great cast as this. I'm very excited to see what it can do. And I hope I can cry like I did during Toy Story 4 in in front of like 40 thousand children amazing 
Um, oh, oh, this no. is gonna be oh, this is gonna be fantastic. Um, I was like, um anyway, okay, let's segue to your number five. All right, um, my number five. Um, kind of like with Tony, my five and four movies. I'm really not necessarily I'm like ecstatic for, but I'm interested in. So with my number five, I have The Gentleman. Um, th- this looks like a fun movie. Um, you know, it, it's kind of given me. Kingsman vibes in yes. the way it's kind of it's kind of seeming like Guy Ritchie's version of like Kingsman whatever and I know Guy Ritchie has been kind of you know been kind of mixed with people lately with this last two movies you know King Arthur and then Aladdin so maybe maybe hopefully this is the one that gets Guy Ritchie back on track it definitely looks more like a Guy Ritchie movie than his last two films so you know, I'm hoping it's really good. It's got a great cast. You know, you got Matthew McConaughey. You got um, Colin Farrell. You got um, Charlie Hunnam. You got Hugh Grant with the with the greatest fit of the 21st century. You know, you just you got you just got a stacked cast here, and it just looks like a fun action movie. It's definitely looking like very much like a Guy Ritchie film. You know, and I think it kind of looks interesting. Yeah, I generally think this could be a fun movie. All right, so. Um, uh, my number five is uh, definitely one that I was a little bit skeptical about, but I'm definitely a little bit more on board for now. And that is A Quiet Place uh, Part 2. So I love the first Quiet Place. Uh, I think it was a very effective, uh, very simple film, but I think it was a very effective concept for sure. And I think it was a film that was able to take its concept and not just make that the whole movie. It had really solid characters. But the one thing that it didn't have was a fully fleshed out world. There's still a lot of things that we don't know. Now, at the time, I was fine with them, you know, leaving that up to the audience. I'm fine with them leaving things up to interpretation. But I feel like that's something that this sequel could do really well. Because if you saw the um, 22nd, like, uh, teaser thing they show before, like, in front of Black Christmas and things like that, it's pretty clear that they're going to be outside of their home now. We're probably going to see a lot more factions and communities and all that kind of stuff, which we saw a glimpse of in the first one, but it was very contained. This one seems like it's going to be going more out of, into the world. You also have, um, <clears throat> Killian Murphy, I believe, and, and, uh, uh, uh Jaime Hanzu in there. I'm bring to them be some really great additions john krasinski coming back directing i mean he did such a great job with the first one i can't wait to see what he does here emily blunt i'm sure is going to give another really strong performance overall i just think this has all the makings of if done well a really uh successful sequel i'm very excited to see what they do here i'm really anticipating that first trailer coming out and uh i hope it delivers so uh yeah can't wait all righty now let's all get into our number four Number four. Yeah. So my number four is the movie Double Nine mentioned in his number five, and that is indeed The Gentleman. I think this one looks like it could be just a really, really fun time at the movies. It does look like the movie that could get Guy Ritchie back on track, because especially with like Aladdin and King Arthur Legend of the Sword, it definitely seems like something he needs like definitely right now. And I agree, uh, it's kind of like Guy Ritchie's Kingsman, because when I watched the trailer, I definitely kind of got that vibe. So I think that's definitely the best way to describe it. It looks like his own version of a Kingsman movie, and I'm perfectly down with it. You have a great cast here, besides the movie just looking like it could be just a really fun time. You know, you have really talented people like Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnam, uh, you have Colin Farrell, you have Henry Golding, the list goes on and on, Hugh Grant. So I yeah. was about to say, don't you dare forget Hugh Grant with the greatest yeah, fit of the 21st century. <laughs> Wait, who's Hugh Grant? <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Who who is that guy? Yeah, I don't know who that is. I'll keep the show. Okay, no one asked you. Is he, is, is he related to Hugh Jackman? Uh so <laughs> <laughs> I, I am sorry, people. I'm sorry. No, but yeah, I, I'm honestly really looking forward to Gentlemen. The more I watch the trailer when going to the movies, the more interested I definitely get. And I hope Guy Ritchie I can definitely pull it off with this movie for sure. I'm really rooting for this movie to succeed. So that is why it is my number four, The Gentleman. All right, guys. Um, my number <clears throat> four is Doolittle, okay? Now... The reason why this is in my list is because I really love polar bears. Mm. <laughs> I really love John Cena. 
<laughs> and John Cena is going to voice a fucking polar bear in this movie. So he I'm is. really excited. Yes, you didn't see the poster? No, I said he is. Oh, okay. Fuck. I was. It was a yeah. statement of fact, not a statement of of, of not not a. It wasn't a question. It's a statement of fact, not a statement of question. So what I was saying is, uh, I really Shut love. Polar bears. I love polar bears ever since I was a young boy. Um, and I've loved John Cena ever since I was a young boy. I loved him in the Fred movies. Those are really great movies. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so... Uh, He's so really good at playing with fire. And Robert Downey Jr. is a pretty cool guy, too. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I can't wait. My most anticipated film ever, even though it's number four. Oh, throwing it back to 2017. Let's go. Um, Number four is Antlers. Um, Antlers is the only horror film that will be in my top five most anticipated. Um, I'm really excited for this, not just because of Guillermo del Toro's involvement producing wise, but the director, uh, he made a film. I haven't seen, um, um, the a Furnace movie or Hostiles or whatever heart crazy. I don't know, but I have seen Black Mass and I thought that was just super fantastic. I'm a big fan of that movie. Um, and when I heard that he was also in a team with Del Toro to make this, I was just, I was like, that that sounds really cool. And Carrie Russell and Jesse Plemons, my boy Todd is in this movie. And that sounds really cool too. Um, the trailer had some really great visuals, really great cinematography, it's eerie atmosphere. I think they're gonna really capture the, the suspense and horror, I think. I just really hope that this isn't like Guillermo del Toro's like last producing movie, which was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, where the characters I thought were really I weak. I hope it's not like that. And normally that kind of um, skepticism could lead to this movie not even being in my top five. But gosh darn it, the trailer just really wins me over every time I see it, whether it's the first trailer or the newest trailer. So I'm just really excited to see how this plays out. All right. So my number four is Ow, my fingers. That... Jackson, shut the fuck Christ. Anyways, my number four is a movie that everyone is going to question their humanity after oh. it being on my list. But honestly, I had to really narrow it down. And um yeah, yeah, I think I'm excited for this movie a little bit more than most people are, but um I don't care. Sonic the Hedgehog. Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> look. Look. If we were talking the first trailer, then yeah, that this would nowhere be near my list. But after that second trailer, this kind of looks like fun. I, I can't lie. This kind of looks like a fun movie. It's All definitely right. a better trailer. It definitely is. It kind of looks like a fun movie, and I'm kind of excited for it. Jim Carrey as um, ah, fuck. What's the villain's Eggman. name? Again? Eggman. Robotnik. Thank you. Doctor Robotnik. Thank you. He looks great, all right? He looks like he's having the blast of his life. Um, he's probably the highlight of, like, everything I see from this movie so far. Um, Sonic looks great, um, actually. You know, I, I like the redesign that they did for him and whatever. You know, he actually looks like how he actually looks like in the games. And, you know, um, I forgot who's doing the voice of him. Ben Schwartz. Would say? Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz definitely seems like he's trying to capture the spirit of the character a lot and, you know, especially how it is in the second trailer. So I definitely um, appreciate that a lot. It just looks like a fun movie. I can't, I can't lie. Like when I was watching the trailer, I'm like, this actually kind of looks fun. Like, you know, I was kind of laughing at the trailer. I hope this is an actual good video game to live action adaptation. You know, we've had a few good ones here and there, you know, so I'm hoping this could, we could add this to the list and whatever. I just hope that I just really hope that this could be fun. Uh, also, I forgot to mention James Marsden. Yeah. He, he looks fine in the movie too. So yeah. All right. So my number four uh, is definitely one. Oh, you're back. What the fuck? <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. So <laughs> I was like, who's walking? All right. So my number, do you see fucking, okay, real talk. My number, Hi. my number four is going to be uh, Onward. Uh, this is one that I've been excited for for a while. I love Pixar, but I especially love when they do more original films like this. Uh, I feel like they can get really creative and it definitely seems like that's the case here. This is a world that 
they haven't really done before. I like the idea that this is a world that is old fashioned, but yet it's still kind of modern in that way. It's really interesting. I think the casting of Chris Pratt and Tom Holland is just perfect. I love these two uh, in here. I think they're going to do some really great work for sure. I think their chemistry is going to be really strong. And the whole central premise of them, like trying to, you know, track down their, like, um, like track down their father and things like that. I think is a really interesting idea. I think I could make for something really sentimental, really emotional, really tug at your heartstrings like Pixar tends to do. Yes, they're focusing more on the humorous aspects, but I mean, Pixar does that with like almost every trailer. So I think there's definitely going to be a little bit more um, part there than we are expecting. And I think overall, this just has potential to be another really great film from Pixar. Uh, the animation looks spectacular here. And just overall, I think this has tons of potential. So definitely my number four. All righty. Now let's get to our number three. Number three. So my number three is going to be Wendy. This is supposed to be a reimagining for Peter Pan, except the main focus is obviously going to be Wendy, and it's supposed to be this epic fantasy and very dramatic. I'm all for it, honestly. I know this is from the director of Beasts of the Southern Wild, and I haven't seen that movie, but I definitely do want to. But yeah, I, I actually do want to get around to that movie just for some reason. I never saw it, but this looks visually stunning. I just like what they're doing to make this universe uh, feel refreshing. The trailer just really got to me. Like this is easily one of my most anticipated movies for this season and of the year in general. I truly can't wait for it. Love the cinematography. Performances all look really, really great. Just the setting of the movie looks absolutely breathtaking. <laughs> I hope this one delivers. That is why Wendy is my number three. Is it bad that I've never heard of this movie until now? What the fuck? I've no, been I, I never heard of it either. I didn't hear about it either. <coughs> Was there Don't one die on us. All right. Uh, this is going to make film fan happy. My number three is Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Fun. I'm going to be honest, it does look fun, in my opinion. Um, Jim Carrey looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I think the design looks really good. I mean, it doesn't look as great as the uh, other design, but you know. Oh, um, yeah. But it, it still looks really <laughs> great. Uh, it just looks like a fun movie, and I really hope it's going to be a fun movie, to be honest, because I don't feel like we get enough good CGI hybrid movies, and I feel like there's a lot of potential. So, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm not pumped out of my mind, but I'm looking forward to it. So you get fuck. Yeah. Nice. Wake up! Jackson. Oh. oh, there you go. Oh, man, I fell asleep as soon as Kevin started talking earlier. <laughs> oh my god, Jackson! <laughs> Bad night. Okay. No, my so number. My, so my, someone give him like lapping gas or something? What the this, fuck? Guys, Did you shut the fuck up, Kevin? My this num- is still not as embarrassing as the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> sure. uh, it's my, not as embarrassing as cats. My number three is um a movie that was supposed to come out this year, but it came out it's coming out in uh, february now it's called the lodge oh the disney channel show Shut, oh my <laughs> the lodge is a really cool looking horror film that is coming out um it's from um the same creative team behind a movie called good night mommy haven't seen it but i've heard some great things and i've been interested to watch it for quite a while it's got a pretty solid cast um alicia silverstone jaden lieber her i'm sorry martell um thorn from the hobbit movies but also the rising star in my opinion riley keogh who's been in who's had such great roles as movies like logan lucky house the jack built hold the hold the dark and under the silver like fuck you kevin and i i, I just i think she's a really talented actress and Overrated. Really... i'm gonna have to start over from the beginning hold on <laughs> Anyways, my number three is a movie called The Lodge. Um, it's a new horror film that's coming out. The only horror film that's in my top five. It was supposed to come out this year, but instead it got pushed to 
2020. So now it's in this top five most anticipated. It's from the same creative team behind Good Night Mommy, another horror film that I wanted to see, but I never got the chance to, but I've always been interested in. The trailer for this looks really cool. It looks like it has a really intriguing story with some great filmmaking. And it's got a really solid cast to back it up, like Alicia Silverstone, Jaden Lieberher, uh, sorry, Martell Thorne from the Hobbit movies, but also a rising star, in my opinion, Riley Keogh. She's been she's had great roles in movies like Logan Lucky, Honor the Silver Lake, The House That Jack Built, and mm-hmm. Insert another movie that I probably forgot the title of, but I, I'm really excited to watch this. It's the only horror film that's in my top five for the um um January to April season of movies, and I think it looks really cool. I was bummed it didn't come out this year, but I'm hey, at least it's still coming out. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I gotta start. I gotta start over from oh the beginning. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I don't have. <laughs> I will literally walk out. My number three. My number three is Mulan. I'm very much looking forward to this movie. Mulan is one of my favorite. I think it's like in my top three favorite Disney films. This is the one that I've always thought could work the most in live action. I always thought Mulan was the one that they always should try because I do think they could tell a really epic tale with it. And I'm glad that they're finally doing it and actually looks good. I saw the trailer in IMAX before Star Wars. and just, This movie looks beautiful. I cannot wait for this film. It seems like they're really capturing the animated film quite perfectly. But also, you know, just bringing their own uh, little spin on it and everything. I think it looks great. The lead actress looks great as Mulan. I really hope this is as great as it has the potential to be honestly because there is potential for this to be a really great live action film and um you know it, it just looks epic i hope it's as epic as it is looking to be and i just hope it delivers also can we please get a treasure plant live action film thank you all right now next but uh yeah my number three is actually the same as tony's uh wendy a film that apparently nobody else knew about except me and tony but it's it's all good it's all good but uh yeah i've been excited for this one uh pretty much since i heard about i think beast of southern wild is a phenomenal film it's very creative it's very inspiring it's all that kind of stuff you know really made a star of quivon wallace who i haven't seen since the annie film probably because well it was the annie film but whatever but uh regardless wendy looks fantastic uh, i looks just as creative and here's the thing there's been so many countless adaptations of the peter pan character there's only so much you could do that so i think shifting the focus from him to wendy is actually a really cool idea because even like on a service level there's a lot to that character i mean with the group she becomes entangled with the fact she has to become like a mother to all of the um you know to all of like the lost boys and things like that there's a lot you can really do there and it really seems like they are trying to do something uh really special here i have a lot of faith in this film I don't know why it's taking the director this long to make a film, but I think uh, the big reason for that is because he just wanted to make sure he made the best film possible. He wanted to churn out something that was really great. So I can only, you know, champion him for that. I think this has a lot of potential. I fucking love the score, especially in the trailer. It's so whimsical and beautiful, and I just think this has so much potential. Definitely one of the most anticipated, um, for sure. Number three, Wendy. Which uh, you guys should be in the more know about because it looks pretty great. Okay, we won't. Okay, Boomer. Alrighty. <laughs> now let's get to our number two. So my number two is Onward. Of course, the new Pixar movie, uh, one of the two Pixar movies were actually gained in 2020, which is very exciting. And um, this is actually the first Pixar movie to come out in the springtime, which is kind of crazy to think. But yeah, this is the first spring release for Pixar, and I'm really excited about that. I think the story looks really um, just genuinely creative and original. It focuses on these two elf brothers that are bar barking on a quest to bring their dad back to life for just one whole day, which I think is a great idea right there. I think the animation looks really great. Definitely different for Pixar, but I think it does look really beautiful and really colorful. And the voice cast looks like they're going to really bring something to the table here. Tom Holland, um, who is funny enough in Spies in Disguise right now. So it's kind of funny how he has that and then this one and then you also have chris pratt here and then 
uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer. You know, you have a great cast here, and I just can't wait to see where they're going to really take this story. I'm sure, as you can expect with Pixar, it's going to be something very magical, but also something very emotional, and I'm all up for this. I seriously cannot wait to see this one. Definitely one of the most anticipated of the year and of the season, and that is why Onward is my number two. Um... My number two is A Quiet Place Part 2. I really dug the first movie, and I think there's a lot you could do with the sequel, so I'm really excited to see what they're going to do. I think they can get a lot bigger with this. So, yeah, um, uh, I think we're getting a new trailer soon. I'm not. Yeah, uh, New, Year, New Year's Day. New Year's Day. New, New Year's Day, yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. I'm excited to see that new trailer, and... Yeah, I think there's a lot you could do with this sequel, so can't wait. My number two <clears throat> is a little movie that's a part of this franchise that maybe you haven't heard of called James Bond. Oh, so you can oh, do it, but when I do it, it's cringy. Okay. I mean, yeah, because because you, you do it all the time, Kevin. Every. Time. It's like, like, oh, we're going to talk about this new indie called Star Wars. Oh, I'm going to watch the trailer for this new indie called Star Wars. Oh, well, see. because it pisses you off every time. <sighs> I hate this man. So, no time to die. Um, After Spectre, I think I was just kind of done, like, not done with James Bond entirely, obviously, because that character's been around forever. But I think it was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, uh, Casino Royale was a great kickoff to the Craig Bond movies, Quantum Solace, and then Skyfall was like, that was great. So, of course, following it up with Spectre was kind of like a, uh, well, oh, well. So when, when I heard they were going to do one more, I was like, all right, well, let's see what you can bring to it. But... Kerry Joji Fukunaga uh, joining the director, the director's chair for this film had me really excited because he did the uh, first season of True Detective, which is some of the um, uh, best television I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Uh, it's fantastic. And the fact that he's he's getting to work in this this Bond world is pretty exciting to see what he can uh, what to see what he's going to really go for because you have a great cast to work with too Leia Sadu is back and uh, of course Danny Craig but Leia Sadu, Naomi Harris is back Ben Wishaw is back, Ray Fiennes is back great great great, Rami Malek being added and Ana de Armas fresh off of Knives Out also with Daniel Craig is really exciting to say the least and I don't know the actress's name but she's playing a new double O agent as well that could be really, yes that could be a really interesting dynamic that I'm really excited for that she's more younger more uh, or uh, more properly trained for the new age than uh, James Bond himself. So I think that could be a really interesting dynamic. I'm just really interested to see where this story also pans out too, because you have like the typical Bond writers included, but then you also have Phoebe Waller-Bridger punching it up with some jokes, which I've heard great things about Fleabag. So, hey, yes. maybe this could work out very well. I think it can because you also have a strong director at the helm. And also Scott, uh, Scott Z. Burns, who's done a couple other movies that I've liked is also working on the script too so i'm I'm honestly really excited the action looks freaking awesome the shot of him riding the motorcycle just up this fucking wall over the thing is like oh my god and him, him jumping off that bridge too it's like there are so many great great like directing moments in this in the trailer alone so i, I think the movie's gonna have something really special so i'm very excited i hope they end with a good bang unlike specter which was kind of a dud that face though anyways hey. um so my number two may come as a surprise to people that it's high on this list or even really on my list in general and that is birds of prey um uh this movie is not only um this is actually my most anticipated comic book film for the entire year actually um this movie looks awesome um this looks like everything suicide squad should have been to be honest if i'm gonna be honest with you um this looks like just i love the dynamic with all the characters um i like how harley quinn's being added to this um you know seeing the huntress you know black canary like it's just I, it just looks like an awesome team up film you know and you got my boy you got my boy Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor as the villain. I am so excited to see what he is going to bring to the table with that. He, Hello there. I, exactly. General Kenobi. Um, 
Hugh McGregor, he lo- he looks great. I can't wait to see what he does as the villain. You know, uh, Margot Robbie coming back to play Harley Quinn. You know, she was one of the absolute highlights for me in Suicide Squad. So I'm glad that she's coming back to play the character. I can't wait to see her interactions with Huntress and Black Canary. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as the Huntress. Please, could you stomp on my face? Anyways, she looks great. I think she's going to do a fantastic job. I love Mary Will- Mary Elizabeth Winstead a lot. And, you know, I think she's a perfect fit for this role, honestly. Like, I love her look. I think she's going to do great. She's probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most in this film. So, yeah, I just think this looks like a great, honestly, this looks like a lot more unique than any of the other comic book movies that are coming out this year. And that's what draws me the most to it honestly it just looks like an awesome you know team up film and i think it just looks like a blast and the fact that it's gonna be rated r might help it honestly considering how violent some of these characters are so um i'm excited i think it looks great it's very close to being my most anticipated for the winter spring season well damn i didn't know a film fan was into that uh kinky shit but uh all right uh my number two is uh, one that I really didn't know much about at all. It kind of just came the fuck out of nowhere. And that is uh, St. Maud. Uh, this is the new A24 horror film. And right off the bat, that gets me hyped. Uh, but then when you look more into it, I think this film has a lot of potential for sure. Sure, we have seen the concept of this woman that has you know recently become like a born-again Christian. And now she um, is like suffering from this illness, but she's still being pulled in by like the darkness and things like that. We've seen that done before, but it seems like this one's going to do it in a really effective and creepy way. And I think this has a lot of potential for sure. Uh, Morphed Clark is an actress that I've seen in some things that I've really liked her in, but I don't think she's been an actress that has had like that one role yet that really helps her stick out. And I think if this movie is as good as I think it's going to be, I think this could be it. I think there's a lot of potential for her in this film. She looks like she's going to lead it uh, very well. Jennifer L., I'm sure, is going to be really good here, too. Um, I really just love the concept of this. I think this looks, like I said, like a very creepy film. And A24 doing horror films, I mean, they've had an amazing streak lately. So I I really hope that this uh, keeps things up because uh, I really did enjoy this one. And I hope that it... It continues to get them on the right path rather than something like in Fabric, which was disappointing. So, yeah. Now, we're going to get to our number one. Hell yeah. So, my number one should probably be obvious based on what I am wearing, but it is No Time to Die. The name's Dude. 22. Tiger dude. <laughs> but yeah, this is my number one. Uh, I'm very, very hyped for this one. This is definitely the one I'm the most excited to see this season. I really enjoy the James Bond movies from what I've seen. I've seen some of the older ones. I've seen all the Daniel Craig ones. I do want to try to watch some of the ones that I haven't seen though. So maybe if I can, I want to try to attempt to watch every single James Bond movie leading up to this one. This is supposed to be Daniel Craig's last movie. It is confirmed to be Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie. Yes. And um, I hope they definitely go all out with this. I, I love Daniel Craig in this role. I think he's absolutely fantastic as James Bond. It's been interesting to see them go on the more grounded side of James Bond. It just looks like it's going to have everything you like in these Daniel Craig James Bond movies, but it's also going to have some of the like, really cool gadgets they could also expect in the James Bond movie too. Rami Malek being the villain of this is awesome. You have Christoph Waltz back here from Spectre, which is also really cool here too. You also have Ana de Armas, who was funny enough, also with Daniel Craig and Knives Out recently. Yep. So that's kind of cool right there. And yeah, everyone just looks like they're going to be really great in this movie. The cinematography looks absolutely great. And obviously, that's no surprise to say that with the James Bond movie. But wow, the cinematography is so breathtaking, especially with the action sequences. The action, my God, uh, they look they look absolutely incredible, especially the final shot with the guns coming out of the car and just shoot and just spinning and shooting. That was like so badish right there. I, I hope this is not a disappointment. I really hope that they go all out for this being Daniel Craig's last Bond film. I truly can't wait for no time to die. And that is why it is my number one anticipated for the season. 
My number one is Onward. Um, I really love Pixar, and I really love Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. And this movie looks really fun. It looks like it's going to be a really funny and beautiful movie. The story looks interesting. The animation looks great, and I cannot wait. God, I'm so tired. I, I, I think this movie's going to be great. Yippee. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So my number one, it really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Uh, I'm a big fan of these kind of movies. Um, and I think this one has a lot of great potential. Despite it coming out around January, I think it, I think it's going to be one of those films that feels not like one of like one of those uh, dumping ground kind of movies. So without further ado, my number one most anticipated is Like a Boss. Oh my God. <laughs> like a Boss stars Rose Byrne and Tiffany Haddish and Salma Hayek and it looks really funny. I'm kidding. My number one is actually Gretel and Hansel. Your only horror film on this list. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It's the yes. only horror film I have on my top five. Um, and I think it looks really great. Uh, the cinematography already in the trailer looks phenomenal. We've got a, uh, what looks like will be a good cast. Sophia Lillis obviously is a, a great actress as we've already seen before. Even in the Nancy Drew movie, she wasn't even all that bad in that. So I think even under better direction, hopefully with a better story that I hope this is, uh, she'll be able to uh, show that she has what, what it takes to be like a leading, like a leading lady in, the, in, a, in a movie. Um, I'm also really excited because the director is Osgood Perkins. Uh, he's the son of Anthony Perkins from Psycho. Um, and he's also made two movies, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House from Netflix and The Black Coat's Daughter from A24. I like um, the Netflix movie, but I really, really, really love Black Coat's Daughter. And if you haven't seen it, please check it out. Um, and I think he's got a really great eye for what really can get under people's skin as far as horror goes. So even a PG-13 rating for this movie uh, really doesn't have me all that concerned. I think hopefully that he'll be able to inject something really special about this. I hope this isn't just one of those, well, I just got plugged from indie obscurity, so fuck it. I don't, I don't, I hope that's not the, what the, I hope that's not the kind of director that he is. I, I hope he has something really special here. And I'm, I've got a lot of faith put into this movie. I'm very excited. For like a boss. Jesus. So my number one most anticipated of the winter spring season is No Time to Die. I am a fan of the James Bond, well, mostly the Daniel Craig ones because they're really the only ones I've seen. But I do enjoy most of the movies in that series. Um, I love Casino Royale. Quantum of Solace is kind of eh. Um, Skyfall is one of my all-time favorite action films honestly, and Spectre was pretty great. So I'm hoping this ends off Daniel Craig's run as the character on a very high note. The action looks fantastic. The cinematography, like Tony said, looks beautiful. But however, I think the thing that gets me most excited about this movie is Rami Malek as the villain. I think he looks absolutely fantastic in this. He really seems like he's going to be... I hope he ends up being one of the most menacing Bond villains we've had thus far. He does have the potential to be, you know, I think he looks really fantastic in this. I saw this trailer six times when I went, when I did my triple feature with Caden last week and whatever, because it just kept on playing the trailer all over, all again and again and again, but it does look great, um, honestly, and it does have a lot of promise. I hope this does end off. His, you know, like I said, Daniel Craig's run as the character of James Bond on a very high note. It does have all the potential too. So I'm very excited for this movie. It is most definitely my most anticipated for the winter spring season. Wait, six times you saw three movies though. <laughs> oh, you just, oh, I have to tell you the story after we're done here. All right, yeah, very, very interested in that for sure. But uh, yeah, so very predictably, uh, my number one is the one you're all expecting. It's no time to die. I don't think I need to really get into it that much. I'm probably going to echo a lot of things that the other guys have said here. But this, to me, just looks like the perfect final chapter for this iteration of the Bond character. Now, similar to something film fans said, I cannot say that I am a James Bond fan because literally the only James Bond films I have seen 
are the Daniel Craig ones. I am going to fix that. I plan on watching quite a few before No Time to Die. I don't think I'm going to be able to watch every single one because there's so many of them, but I definitely am going to try to watch more before No Time to Die. I think this looks fucking incredible. It really seems like they're going all out here. I've been a big fan of this series. The only one I really don't like is Kwame Salas. I think Spectre is incredibly underrated. I adore both Casino Royale and Skyfall. I think those are two of the best action films of the entire decade. Um, so oh, well, even though Casino Royale is not part of this decade, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Good going. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 I, know, I know what you mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. But uh, yeah, I think this has so much potential for sure. I love the initial plot here that like he has to help out Jeffrey Wright's character and things like that. And then things end up going sideways and there's stuff going on with Leah to do as well that he's not sure if she betrayed him or not, which I think is an interesting idea because a big part of this Bond franchise has been every time he ends up getting close with some kind of girl, it ends up going sideways. So it would be heartbreaking, but if they're going in that direction, I'm excited to see where that really does go. Can this be the first Bond girl that he actually gets to settle down with, or is she? Is it like an Eva Green type situation? I mean, there's there's a lot of potential for what they can uh, really do there. I have to say, though, I'm going to agree with Film Fan. The one thing that gets me even more hyped is seeing my boy Rami Malek as the villain. I've said it for years. This guy's one of the best actors working today. He had no business in being something like Bohemian Rhapsody, so if they they give him a great character. I hope he has a really meaty role. I hope he has some, you know, a really multi-layered character to work with here because if they do, I think he could potentially be one of the best Bond villains. I see tons of potential in him. He's very sinister. He has this very menacing presence to him and I really hope that it turns out to be something great. The action here looks amazing. It just, it really just looks like everything you could want in the last great Bond film. I know Daniel Craig has said before that he's kind of tired of these, but it definitely is not showing in the trailer at all. It seems like he's down for one last sort of hurrah, and I hope that's exactly what this ends up being. And as far as Lashana Lynch's character, I kind of see this like a passing to the torch. Like, if we like this character, they could potentially, you know, carry her over to like the next iteration or something like that. We'll have to see how that does too turn out but overall i think this movie has tons of potential it's definitely not just my most anticipated for this half of the year it's one of my most anticipated for the year overall so i cannot wait to see how this one turns out and uh yeah so without a doubt my number one with pretty much no competition at all <laughs> all right uh awesome list guys uh, as always i always enjoy hearing what everyone has to put in their list you know i do want to say i am sorry if this is not the most exciting anticipated video we're really trying with this season we yeah. really really are uh but i hope regardless even if it's not much i hope you all still enjoyed watching this so of course thank you to everyone for watching comment down below and let me know uh what are your top five anticipated for this season and of course before i close the video I'm gonna i was about to say you're gonna just like you're just gonna forget Get us? No, uh, I, I can never forget. Well, maybe you, but everyone oh, okay. else. Forget. But yeah, of course, before I close the video, though, I'm going to get to everyone one by one, starting off with Adam. Where can the people find you? Space. <laughs> oh, you can find me on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> very, very, uh, very elaborate. Wow, okay. The YouTube channel is uh, Kevin Fox 2.0. Oh, hell yeah. I, I, I gave it over to you. It's your channel now. I don't use it at all. So, so uh, knock yourself out. Go nuts. Yeah. All right. Next yeah. one up is Jackson. Where can the people find you? Yeah, so if you really liked my appearance here for some reason, you can find me on my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Jackson Fulcher. You, you'd probably be easy to find. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. It's at Jackson underscore Fulcher. I mainly just retweet stuff, though, so if even you're interested in that, that's totally up to you. Or you can go on my letterbox where I'm constantly posting about the movies I watch on there. The, the, that's where you can find me. And Wait, if you Jackson, I was, me, I was I gotta, if you'll excuse me, I got to go back to playing Trover Saves the Universe because J Justin Roiland is much better than anything Kevin can make. All right, I got to go. I got I to gotta go. See you around. I, 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 Jackson, I, I, I was very surprised that you didn't have any uh, horror films on your anticipated list. I was very surprised about that. Oh, he's gone. Oh, yeah, man, where can the people find you? 
Um, well, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Phone Fandle 599. If you really want to see the, my thoughts on some movies and stuff like that, then check out my letterbox, which is WWE Fan 0599, because they won't let me change the username for some reason. So if you want to, you know, see what I've been watching and what I've been reviewing, go to there. You know, I've been a lot more active on there. So go check me out on there. And uh, yeah, thank you, Tony, once again for having me on for the anticipated video. And now, Kevin, where can the people find you? So uh, I, I don't think I need to go into it. Uh, you guys can find me over at my YouTube channel. <laughs> So you guys can find me over at my YouTube channel, which is just my name, man. Also, I have a letterbox and an Instagram friend and a Twitter account. And basically, virtually every uh, social media account that there is now. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Tony, always for having me on. I really appreciate it. It is a lot of fun. I really love to be on here. So go ahead. Back to you. <laughs> all right so um thank you. <laughs> thank you to all of my guests thank you to adam jackson film fan kevin and auburn wonder for making his cameo appearance yeah, in fuck this it. Video as well. it didn't even want to be in this but yeah, this was a lot of fun. And of course, don't forget everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude. And me and my guests will always have Tiger Power. Tiger Power, Tiger Power, Tiger Power, Tiger Power. Yeah. 2020. Let's go. Tiger Power. I love ass. Wow. Yeah, same.